broke the promise. <laughs> right? He broke the promise because he went and slept with the Pharaoh, right? He slept with the Pharaoh. Let's just be honest. Said, uh, we're going to put it nicely, right? But he slept with the Pharaoh. So Abraham broke the promise, right? He didn't sleep with the Pharaoh per se, but what? he got in cahoots with him. He got in bed with him. And so if the Pharaoh sees himself as God, and you're supposed to serve the living God, but you call him a friend, you don't call him a God, then you're seeing the Pharaoh and God on the same plane. So Abraham slept with the Pharaoh. He was a whore. I'm, a, I'm being honest. God just said it. He was a Hosea going a whore. Gomer kept leaving. She's a whore. She kept leaving and going to find men to whore around with, and she kept ending up in chains because slavery does not stop. You cannot break slavery out of somebody. You have to, God has to break it out of them as they walk along with you. That's so why I said, I hope I actually, I could yield to God and let God do what he's trying to do because I don't want to irritate my new dad so much that he has to drop me because I won't let go of what is attached to me. I won't let go of it. Nothing can hold on to you unless you hold on to it. And I still feel like part of Jersey, it's not that part of Jersey is hold on to me, right? So God took that from me. But here we go. Here we go. Let's just be honest about it. Part of that desire for family the desire for my, 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 my last family is just is there. People that, could, that, could, that, that could, I can connect to. I don't desire them at all. I don't desire them at all, but that doesn't mean that I don't desire them. I don't think I desire them. That's why people are hypnotizing people to help them. I gotta get this out of you, so I'm gonna put you to sleep and take it out of you. Anesthesia, that's what that is. That's what told me. Kick me, punch me, bite me, scratch me. Uh, uh, please don't bite me. But then I know that like yell at me, whatever you gotta do, please don't yell at me, that's so scary. <laughs> but like whatever you gotta do, I don't care if he yells at me. I just started sweating a little bit. But I don't care if he yells at me, yell at me. Just don't let me die in my mess. So I broke the poem, I will not die in my mess. But Abraham did. And he was God's friend. Isaac did, and he was blind. When promise goes blind, hmm, what happens? Promise is potential, promise is, it's, it's, it's potential lies and relies on the fact that you see it. Now, I can promise you something, but if you can't see me actually giving it to you, God promised us some stuff. In order for us to pray properly, we have to be able to see that God loves us because we have to see him out of our mind's eye, even though we can't see him standing in front of us, right? Promise does not lie. What does it have to to? It says, write the vision, make it plain, and they shall run to hear it, and they shall, you will know, run, whatever, whatever, whatever. But it, it tells us to, though the vision tarry, wait for it. In expectation. That vision, that promise. But when promise dies, promise goes blind first and then promise dies? What happens? Because if I go blind, I, I can obviously no longer see what was given to me, what was told to me. I can't tell you about it, right? And the beautiful part about this is the picture of it. We see it. He had twin boys, right? One of them came out first and then went back in. The other one came out, right? Because the midwife tied a rope around or something like that. The other one came out, right? So Esau, actually, if you read the story, it's kind of confusing, but I don't think Esau was the oldest one. But God, right, spoke to promise in Rebecca and told her, he said, the older shall serve the younger because he knew, he knew that they were going to call Jacob the younger. Jacob may have not have actually been the youngest, but they knew, he knew Jacob was, they were called Jacob the younger. So what he did was he made room for it. When God has something for you, he always makes room for you and he will tell you what to do so that you can get it and keep it and keep it on fire with him. God will never say, I got something for you and then leave you in the, the muck and the mire. The problem I have is that Jacob and he saw came out to struggling and fighting for something that did not belong to them. And they should have been fighting for it anyway. Because here's the thing. God, mm -mm, God never told. Abraham never told. Nobody ever told Isaac that the promise was supposed to go to the older one. <laughs> First, we don't know that you saw. And just, we don't know because they were twins. So we don't know who was older. If you read the story, the way it was set up, if you read the story, it's, it's a little confusing. But I don't think that Esau was the oldest child. Either way, nobody cares because it doesn't matter. You know why? Because check this out. <laughs> Who told Isaac to give the promise 
to the younger. Who told you that this blessing belonged to you so that you could stipulate who gets it? Who told you? Hallelujah. How God wants to do it. As a matter of fact, if you look at it, Ishmael was sent away when Isaac was given a promise. And they were not twins at all. Isaac was four and Ishmael was 13. Nine years apart. Who got the promise? Isaac did. But do you have children and you are going to hold it to them and say the young, the oldest has to get the promise and the younger doesn't get it? There were no pictures before that that stipulated how it was supposed to be done. Because Abraham's kids, Isaac and Ishmael, the youngest got it. I believe because Abraham as God was supposed to get it. Because God said, right, Ishmael was the son of slavery, Isaac was the son of promise. Isaac was to get it. But then when Isaac got up some size, he went and saw things, I believe, in a way that God did not intend for him to see it. And so because even though Rebecca had the promise that said uh, the younger would serve the old, or the older would serve the younger, he still went and said, no, I think it should be this way. When you say it's going to be this way, hallelujah, you better hope that God is going your way. You better hope. And so when I was young, I remember um, God telling me on a Monday that, that I, he wanted me to get saved. Monday afternoon, I was playing. He wanted me to get saved. I was six, right? Had to be. And so, I prayed. I remember praying. I remember God speaking to me. I prayed in the, in the bedroom. Then, Tasha was doing dishes, right? So, if I was six, she had to be ten. So, I, I, I prayed right then and there. And so, I don't remember, but I just prayed. I remember it happening that way. But then, when salvation time came on Sunday, I knew. I didn't say anything to my parents, but I knew what I was going to do. I walked out of the aisle, and I went up to the front of the church, and I got saved. And I know they thought I was crazy, but after that was this huge battle. After that was this huge battle, my, father, my mother was like, okay, she got saved. And he was like, well, yes, but it's not supposed to happen that way. Tasha's supposed to get saved first, and then she's supposed to get saved. My thing is this. Tasha was not even his kid. And he was not concerned about her getting saved. What you should be concerned about is if I'm at them, I'm six years old, and I want to get saved like that. I'm six years old, and then right after that, I started taking communion. Two weeks. And then they do communion often. That's just not a, a thing that's popular in Jersey. They do that every couple of months. Right after that, I started taking communion. But Tasha had to do it first. And if Tasha didn't do it, she doesn't do it. That's just the way that it works in the Nigerian family. He's from Nigeria, actual Nigeria. Like he came here on a boat. He came here on an actual boat. Not slave shit, but a boat. Probably didn't need him to pin to the Santa Maria, but a boat. <laughs> so yes, I'm Nigerian, right? But even though I have that in my ethnicity, it does not mean I'm going to run my life like that. And if God tells me he wants me to get saved, then that means me and only me. I didn't know. I didn't think about what God had told Tasha. I didn't, I, I'm the kid, so I didn't even see it. In my head, I didn't see it. I was so worried about walking up to the front of the church by myself. Because I didn't tell my parents. And she was a Sunday school teacher, and he was a deacon, and so they still had clout in the church. <laughs> we got home, and he's like, no, Tasha has to do it first. That's not your daughter. What you should be doing is getting the daughter that uh, just got saved. Even if Tasha was his daughter, you take the daughter that just got saved and get her reading materials and get her a Bible and get her started on the road to knowing Jesus, who he is, and what he's all about. Hallelujah. Why are you concerned with, uh, and why was Isaac concerned with uh, a birthright, birthright that did not belong to him? Isaac, because that was not his birthright. That's not your birthright to give out. Uh, who are you to say who gets saved first or who gets saved second? You ain't even saved yourself. Uh, and I'm not even going into that. But however, however, the attention behind it, and I was okay with this, because I'm an introvert, still am, but the attention behind that immediately left me. I went on her. I'm okay with that. Because that's the way they still saw me and they thought I was a golden child. I don't know why. My father wanted me. So whenever my father was around, my mother was always nicer. A lot nicer. She hated both of us when he was gone, but when he came in the door, she loved me. I was a golden child. God said promise goes blind when favoritism enters. Favoritism, nepotism, any of the isms and schisms. When isms and schisms come in, right, then... 
promise goes blind. There's a promise on your family and it can go blind quickly, right? Because God can't, God will not be inside of a crazy situation. He will leave, right? So promise goes blind. If God leaves, promise goes blind and check this out, right? Oh God, your family can be left without something that you feel it was promised. Isaac the promise actually knew he could give out the promise, but he actually didn't believe in the promise keeping God. Why? Because when Ed Jacob took, he believed took the birthright from them, then um, Esau came in and he was like, oh father, oh father, where's the, 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 what, don't you have a birthright from me? And then and, um, Jacob said, uh, uh, Isaac said, wait, weren't you just here? I just gave out a birthright to somebody. Well, I'll just give you this son. I'll just give you this son. And the Bible says they were weeping sorely. I could see Esau weeping like that, but why are you weeping, Isaac? If you are the promise keeping uh, servant of God, and you the promise keeping servant of God, then why is it not enough to be able to pray for your son and give him promise? Because whether you like it or not, the way the Bible lays it out, I think Esau ended up with what he was supposed to get. And he was happy. That's why when Jacob came back over the river, and started sending, uh, he sent Rachel first, and then he sent Leah, and he sent, I think, Zilpah and Bilhah, maybe of a different order. Those were two hand servants, or maid servants, whatever. Handmaids. But Jacob was in torment. He was in torment because he had the birthright. He was in torment because of the way that he got it. Because of the way he attained it. Esau was happy. He was, he was throwing up hands and eat them. The Bible said he had a whole bunch of Edomite wives. He was happy. So when Jacob came, he ran to Jacob and hugged him. He ran. Jacob thought he was going to kill him. He ran to Jacob and hugged him. They had such a good time. When they left, they had to go, Miss Mary, Matt, Matt, Matt. No. What did they <laughs> That's where that, This is where that blessing came from. May the Lord watch. Between me and thee, while they were at, while we're asking one from another, in the name of the Father. That's where that blessing comes from. May the Lord watch between me and thee. That's Jacob and Esau. You wouldn't think it. While their parents were around, right, they were totally crazy. But they were acting out their parents' favoritism for them. My father favored me. My sister hated me as a result of it. He was raping my sister, and my mother didn't believe either one of us, so she was beating the crap out of both of us. Get it? It's different here, though. They had twin boys, and Isaac loved Esau, and Rebecca loved Jacob, right? So they picked up the person that was the most like them. Now, right after we left my father, it switched. My father, he loved me, but he left, right? And he didn't really love me like that. But he loved abusing us. Mama loved my older sister. Especially after we left. She didn't get beat after that time at all. So she loved my older sister. But after that, she broke my back. She loved her, but she didn't really love her at all. Because if you love, if, if you love Tasha, you wouldn't. I'm just being honest. If you love Tasha, why are you hurting me? I think about it about five years ago. Um, one of my cousins came to me and they said, when are you coming home? And I said, mm, I don't know. Because I already be careful because I to say it's not my home anymore. There's a whole thing. They make it a whole thing. I know it's not my home anymore, but I don't have to say that to them. I don't give them a reason to ask questions, but I keep what God has told me about it to myself. Somehow Samantha found out about it, called me, and said, hmm, we don't talk to her anymore. And I said, Why? Because I knew once I was gone, right, I'm the abuse subject, the subject of abuse, right? I'm the reason why the family was messed up. That's what she always said, it, right? So if I'm the reason for it, if I'm out, you guys can get closer to her. Samantha, you're not home. Samantha wanted to be home so bad. So I'm three left when Samantha was four. And so Samantha moved on my grandmother. Samantha wanted to be home with Lois so bad, and I wanted to be with my grandmother. So now that I'm not there, I'm thinking that when Dyson took me out, Samantha was coming right home. And my older sister was there as well. My older my mother loved her. So I figured it's just going to work out. It's going to work out. And Samantha said, no. I said, how's Tasha? She's like, Tasha's suicidal again. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Check this out. They don't talk at all anymore. I said, why? She said, Tasha stood up and said, you're the reason why my sister left. And they haven't talked since. 
Is that what I want? No. But sometimes, sometimes God has a way. I sat past a David's office, right? And I said to him, I was like, I don't want anything to happen to my mother. This, I was just told me that years ago. I've talked to Smith for years. I said, I, 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 I don't want anything to happen to my mother. As a matter of fact, since I, since I forgave her and, 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 and she, and, and, you know, I forgave her, can she slide on the judgment? Because forgiveness is saying that I love her and I give up and I'll, I'll, forgive, I'll, I'll forgive her and I don't want any judgment to happen for that person. I'm not looking for any judgment to take place on their behalf. So I forgive everybody. And I said, I definitely forgive her. Can't, since I said that, can't, can't she skirt? Any types of any types of isms and schisms will not only cause promise to lead, but they incur the wrath of God. They incur judgment like you cannot believe. Why does it seem so intense and crazy? It's because of the fact that it happens within and inside of your own house. Just as David, the Bible says, from the time he did that, right from the time he did that to your Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, the Bible never calls her, never calls her David's wife. Abigail, David's wife, right? That is Abigail the Carmelite test. But Abigail, David, I think it's, at one point just called her David's, David, not David's wife, or David's wife or something like that. But it refuses, the Bible refused to even connect the name David with uh, Bathsheba. That's Bathsheba, she, she bass on Sheba, she bass on the roof, bass on the back, that's Bathsheba, she be up there. That, but that's not his wife, that's, that's Uriah's wife. Uriah's wife be up there, not, not, we don't know about David. David ain't got no wife named Bathsheba, that's why Helen sees it. Tell me, tell me marriage ain't important. Tell me what in the blah, blah, blah. When, yeah, okay, that's cute and, and funsies. Get you a, a lace dress. You'd be better off going down to the justice of the peace. Because I know the justice of the real peace. And he ain't rolling like that. Somebody told me in my church that they couldn't wait to get to heaven. So they could drop their wife and go on to better things. Mm, so you think you're going to make that pellet? Huh? You think you just drop them like that? You think it's going to work like that? Marriage is covenant. Covenant lasts. Abraham is dead and gone. And he's like, bye, Sarah. And watch that stone roll. Abraham, Abraham is dead and gone. And that stone roll between them, right? And what did they do when Abraham died? Rolled that stone back, took his old bones, and threw it right on top of her. Because she, she was going to be with her husband, right? It's just like that. Ain't no marriage ends and marriage begins just because you say it. You get married, it's covenant, right? You're staying there. Covenant, not contract. It's not based on a piece of paper. You want a piece of paper type of a reaction or transaction? Go get an automobile and sign on the dotted line and pay for the whole thing yourself. But when it comes to marriage, that's covenant. And God pays for that. You can't buy me, sweetie. I'm too rich for your blood. Isms and schisms. Isms and schisms. And what do we end up with? Broken promises. That's what I'm about. That's what when a family breaks up, that's what it is. Isms and schisms always cause favoritism. Things like that. Nepotism causes isms and schisms within the household. And what do you end up with all the time when isms and schisms enter in? Broken promises. That's nothing. That's, that's exactly. The voice is nothing else but that. God said the definition of the voice is broken promise. You made a promise and you broke it. That's why he says better not to make a vow than to make one and to break one. If you can help it, stay single. Stay single. And look, look, look the king, I, I told God I want the king. The king is on Obadiah's circle. So and he lost. Apparently, he been lost for like seven years. So God gave me a dad right now. So I need to learn from my dad anyway. I've never had a parent. I'm raised by wolves. I said, God, even if somebody did come into my life, my brother, y'all, but even if somebody did come into my life, I told God this, uh, what, last year? Even if somebody did come into my life, what would I do? How would I know? I wouldn't know nothing. I would push them away like I push everybody away. I was like, God, I need a dad. It's not that you lack in purpose in my life. You are all the purpose. But I know that this first person has to be there to even teach me how to treat you. I don't know what dads do. I have no idea. But Abraham and Isaac, I know they don't do that. 